Well, thank you for the invitation. And um, it is, of course, a very, uh, I'm very humbly coming to speak to you about SMILE. Because obviously, uh, Professor Bai Ji, Professor Zhou, many of you here, Professor Wang, you've all really led uh, the advancing uh, of lenticular surgery. And, um, you know, uh, when I was starting, I was looking at your publications, and I was reading your materials, and I was looking at your techniques. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for allowing me. Uh, because I live in Europe, I have advantage of having access to the Visimax 800 before you. So um, I'm going to speak to you about this incredible jump in technology. And you know, obviously, I, I've been a consultant for Carl Zeiss since uh, 2001. And I've been very involved in the development of the Visumax 800. So we look at why we wanted a next generation machine, and we were looking at the disadvantages of the Visumax that was operating at 500. Obviously, it's a huge device. It, it's very, very big, and it's static. You can't move it anywhere. Um, the another disadvantage was that you had to use the, the, the Zeiss bed. You couldn't use it with another eczema laser. And it had a kind of like a tunnel, like an MRI tunnel um, uh, configuration for the patient. So some patients might find it a little bit overwhelming. And we all have a problem with the fact that the bed is so damn slow. <laughs> So you have to wait for the bed to come in and wait for the bed to go out. Um, I know that a lot of you roll patients in and roll out uh, to, to, to save speed, but these were kind of like the industrial design features that we thought we wanted to improve. So I was involved really early when we were looking at artist drawings about how the device could, would look just from an industrial design standpoint. And from, from my childhood in the United States, um, I used to watch this program called Lost in Space. Uh, I'm sure you didn't have this in China, but it was, there was a robot in this, pro, in, this, in this thing, and this was the robot. And the robot had these arms that moved like this, and the robot used to get very excited. Um, and so you see, we, we basically copied uh, the design from the 1960s. Now, on the day that we finally revealed this, um, you can see that we've changed everything, okay? It's a very small footprint. It can be moved, it can be used with any laser bed, and we've now created a much more, uh, uh, a much more um, pleasant patient experience. This is my, one of my operating rooms in my clinic in London, is our cataract room, is very small. Um, and you can see that I have my Artivo 800 here in the corner when I'm doing Visumax 800 treatments. And then in the afternoon, when we do ICLs, we just switch the instruments around. So this, this change takes us about 20 minutes because the machine just rolls on wheels, okay? Now, of course, it's independent of what bed. Now, we tested a number of beds as the desirable bed is the Brumava, uh, which has a, a, a very, very versatile head adjustments so that fat people and small people and long people, everybody can be adjusted. You know that the bed on the Visumax 500 it's not, a, you, sometimes you have to put pillows under it. So this was really a very versatile bed. Or you can have the bed that works in the combi unit together with the Mel 90 for Presbyond. We have, the, we have eliminated this tunnel experience for the patient. Everything is open sky now. So when you look at the patient experience, it looks, uh, excuse me, get this video to play. Yeah, so on the Visimax 500 and the Visimax 800, and you see the, the, the patient is seeing you know, a very slow march to their death. <laughs> and it's very anxiety provoking as the bed is moving. Whereas you have a completely open sky here and really the patient is lying there and they just maybe, I, I cover the eye when the, when the arm is coming down, but you have a very open situation and it's very, it's much less intimidating for the patient. Now, the other thing is that, if you think about it, the Visimax 500 was designed where the surgeon is the king. And you have the cockpit, and the patient moves, and everybody is around me. I'm the surgeon. But we did it the other way around. 
Now everything moves around the patient. So the patient stays in the same position for six and a half minutes and is done. So the magic of smile is even higher now because the patient lies down a few minutes of I don't know what and that's it. There's no movements. Now, clinical results. In my practice, we published this, this is the first paper that was published, obviously we had access to this before, and we had, you know, uh, the full range of myopia up to minus 10 with four diopters of cylinder, and we compared this to our 4,000 eye series, which was the population that we published um, for the 500, and we found that the outcomes were the same. Now, I know that some people are saying the outcomes are better, but I really believe that that's just to do with energy settings. Um, and obviously, when you're going much faster, the bubble dynamics, the, the OBL dynamics are different. So it's possible that some people will get better results. For our practice, the way that we have our energy settings on the 500, we found everything to be the same. However, what is different is that a number of the manual processes which we developed to overcome the difficulties of docking and centration or of cyclotorsion control, those things are now automated. And that is where the workflow for you as a surgeon is enhanced. So one of the things that we've observed in one of the studies published from Ikiru's group is that the total higher order aberrations for the same comparison groups are lower. And that comes mainly from less vertical coma. We all know that smile tends to induce a little bit of vertical coma. And we f we're finding now that this is actually lower with the Visimax 800. Now the procedure itself, I'm gonna show you one eye. This is sped up at the beginning. Um, and I'm gonna slow down now just to show you the technical aspects of docking. So um, the machine is coming down, you're doing exactly the same thing that you always do, but now you have an overlay which gives you an indication of what your centration is like as you're coming down. And then once you um, get everything aligned on the visual axis and apply suction, then you can do the cyclotorsion manually from marks or now, as of the last uh, five months, we've had infrared uh, cyclotorsion control. Obviously, the cutting is extremely fast. It's less than 10 seconds for a 7 millimeter lenticule. And so the whole procedure, as you can see, switching the microscopes, the lenticule extraction is exactly the same. And now we have a blue light. So now we can check the lenticule with fluorescein at the end of the procedure, which is, of course, a big advantage if you're looking at slivers or um, parts of the edge of the lenticule that might have been retained. So, in general, the total procedure time is between six and a half and seven and a half minutes. Let's look at the details here. So, the central line docking assistant, what you have here is a deviation from the visual axis in live terms. And that lollipop there, that yellow dot, is what you're following with your joystick. As you come onto the visual axis, you'll then apply the suction. Once the suction is applied, you switch to infrared and check the uh, centration. And then at that point, you can see on the docking that you are within 100 microns of the visual axis. Pictorially, what this looks like is that you, you will be moving the joystick as you're coming down. And then once you're there, you've got the green flashing light and you've got your lollipop here. This is the visual axis. So you move the joystick in the direction of the lollipop, and now you see you are centered 200 microns. And then you move it a little bit more, and now you'll be maybe 100 microns from the visual axis. And you move it a little bit more in the other direction, and now you're within 100 microns, or less than 100 microns of the visual axis. So this is, this is essentially what the... Um, a computerized assisted centration is. As far as cyclotorsion, remember that not everybody holds their head straight. So it's not, it's not just a question of cyclotorsion from sitting to lying. It's also to do with the position that the patient has naturally. This is a patient who had a two degree head tilt. And so when we're marking at the slit lamp, we tell the patient, hold your head straight the way you normally do, and you mark, or you have the 
oculine from the uh, IOL Master 700, and the patient is holding their head like they normally do. So now you're taking into account also the head tilt, not just the cyclotorsion from sitting to lying. And it works beautifully. Um, once you've achieved suction, you've got your marks, and you, you will move the joystick and gradually put the visual axis on there, and then it loads the treatment, and you're ready to treat. So pictorially, what that looks like is moving the joystick to get the reticles onto your uh, marks. Now, of course, now we have iris recognition, and this comes from the IOL Master, and soon it will also be from the MS-39 from CSO, and you can see that once you achieve suction, you then switch between the static infrared and the live infrared image, and you can look at the contours and make sure that everything is aligned the way you like before you start cutting. What does this mean? Well, of course, it means that we get better control of astigmatism. It also, because of the fast cutting time, we can see that, it's like, obviously, the procedures are going to be much faster. The lenticule separation is the same, but the overall treatment time, the suction time, is, is lower, and the overall time to do both eyes is lower as well. Now, one of the interesting things about cutting faster is that we are now improving the OBL dynamics. We all know that as the cutting occurs, you can get coalescence of the OBL. Now, when you get coalescence of these bubbles, you can get lamellar distortion that occurs before the second cut. And so the second cut can sometimes traverse distorted lamellae. And what this results in is a distorted cut. And we see this. When you see here, this is side by side, look how much faster we're cutting here. So there's no time for the bubbles to coalesce before the second cut occurs. And so here we are, we're still cutting here. Imagine all of the OBL from the first cut is still you know, blossoming and still coalescing and still distorting tissue. This means that what we see this immediately after surgery, when we put fluorescein in the eye, we sometimes, with the Visumax 500, we see these concentric circles. And we did a lot of investigating as to what's causing this, and I believe it's almost like a pressure cooker effect, where the bubbles um, uh, uh, accumulate, and then there's a release. As, they, as, they, as, the, as the progression of the line occurs. With the Visumax 800, this is now really very rare to see these, these circles now. And what that means is that the day one visions are better. Because as you know, those concentric circles, they improve with time because of epithelial remodeling. Now, one of the big features of the new cutting speed is the suction loss rate. This is our study on suction loss. This is 4,000 eyes. We had um, 20 suction losses. That's a 0.5% suction loss rate. And all of our treatments were completed on the same day. So 40% of the eyes we converted to LASIK, 60% we still did smile in the same patient. Now, this, the causes of suction loss were the bell reflex and tracking the green light. Those were the two main causes. But inadequate anesthesia, excess anxiety, and a false suction uh, with the conjunctiva were other features. Now, as far as who made the suction, the surgeon made the suction in 20% of the cases because we saw an eye movement and we let go of the eye. But the patient generated the suction loss in 75% of the cases. Now, if we look at the time of cutting, all of these suction losses are going to be eliminated because the cutting is only 9.5 seconds. So all of the suction losses after 9.5 seconds are gone. Now we can, which means that automatically we're getting a 65% reduction in the suction loss rate, automatically, just because of the timing. Now the tracking is eliminated because now we have a, the ability to switch off the green light. So after suction, just before we start cutting, we switch the green light off, and now there's no tracking. The patient has nothing to look at, and you're just telling the patient to look into the sky, and they see nothing. So everything becomes 
very, very gentle for the patient. They're not worried about looking at the green lights or doing something wrong. And this is done very easily by a little button here, which is right where your control panel is. So the tracking is eliminated. We measure patient anxiety in every patient, and we were able to see a statistically significant lower anxiety level for the 800 patients, 15% less. And finally, the bell. So as you know, with the 500, the cutting time is you know, 25 to 35 seconds, depending on the size of your lenticule. And during this time, the patient is you know, likely, in some cases, to involuntarily have a bell reflex. As you can see in this case, right towards the end. Uh, whoop, okay, sorry about that. But that is now eliminated, because when we looked at our bells cases, all of the bell cases were after 15 seconds. So now it's not going to happen anymore, right? Because it's just not, this, we're talking about, our series is 4,000 eyes. So we think that, that the bell reflex is eliminated, which means that if you do the mathematics of the reduction of all of these factors, we calculate that the suction loss rate is going to go from 1 in 200 to 1 in 3,000. So we think that it's really gone. Now, in the two years that I've been using the Visimax 800, I've had two cases where it was almost suction loss. Here's one where there was a, uh, uh, sorry, a type one movement. You see a, a very, very short eye movement there, but the patient remained controlled. There was no discontinuity in the bubble, so I continued treating, and the case ended up fine. The set, and you can see here the minus one with the two cylinder ended up perfectly on target with a beautiful difference map. Here's the second case where the patient had a bell reflex and the bell reflex occurred right at the last second. So because of the timing, this did not become a problem. You can see everything was fine, it was a sunny day, the sun was shining, and then suddenly, just before, but the incisions were made, and of course, again, the case ended up exactly on target with a perfect centration and perfect difference map. Now, you don't have this immediately yet in China, but we are doing hyperopic smile. As you know, I did the first studies with Kishore Pradhan in 2016 in Nepal, and we designed the geometry. We're treating up to plus 650, and you can see that 75% of the eyes that were 2020 pre-op were 2020 uncorrected post-op. We had 1% loss of two lines, but actually it was 0.9% because it was a data entry error. And you can see that really the results are very good. We're getting a little bit under correction in the nomogram and quite a lot of under correction in the cylinder. This is just a question of nomogram adjustment. But as you can see, the results are really excellent. Um, so in summary, we're looking at a device that has an industrial design that is centered around the patient experience and centered around your experience in the operating room. We have automated robotic, if you like, centration and cyclotorsion control. We have probably eliminated suction loss. We are therefore getting better astigmatic control. We're getting better higher order aberration control. We're getting much more surgical efficiency. We have better day one visions because the cutting lenticules are smoother. And of course, we have hyperopia. So when we're talking about robotic surgery, I believe that the next generation is going to be where the robot removes the lenticule for you. And then you are just drinking the little cappuccino while you're watching the robot do the whole procedure. Much for your attention. Thank you.